<coughs> Hi, everyone. Blambly, Blamblano here. The internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Open Mike Eagle album, Dark Comedy. Open Mike Eagle is a rapper based on the West Coast and currently is a member of one of my favorite rap crews, Hellfire Club. Rhetoric Ramirez, Milo, Bus Driver, No Can Do, and others. All of whom I'm actually surprised don't turn up on this new Open Mike Eagle record. Of the few features that are on this thing, among them are Cool AD of Das Racist fame and comedian Hannibal Burris, whose verse on the track Doug Stamper might be one of the funniest things you hear all year. This album is relatively feature-free. For whatever reason, Mike essentially takes this record, grabs a bunch of producers, and says, I got this! And this thing is essentially 13 tracks with a handful of producers crafting different beats. It's not really quite as cohesive as Mike's last full-length LP, Animal Hospital, which was all produced by Awkward. But still, Mike comes through with a really enjoyable album of funny, clever, nerdy, soulful, playful, memorable, eccentric, left-field art rap songs. Mike isn't one of those rappers that's overly technical, has a really fast flow, he's not one of these guys that's going to talk tough and spit at you rapid fire really unemotionally. He's more of the softer, sensitive type, but incredibly captivating, relatable, and hilarious. He is part eccentric philosopher, part charismatic free spirit, part introspective brain picker, part braggadocious psyche flexor. And lyrically, with this new record of his dark comedy, he is as on point as ever, like with the trusty track off of this record, Qualifiers. One of Mike's best tracks in a while, a song that has been out and about on the internet long before this album dropped. A track where Mike finds a lot to be proud of, a lot to brag about, in simply being a, a solid family figure. He moves on to say he might smoke you in Goldeneye. He makes a really nice They Might Be Giants reference, which there are a couple of on this record, a really notable one on his last LP too. He even tells a short little story of going to Africa and blowing people's minds with his alternative style of hip-hop, and he says they're surprised it's free of bitches and hoes. And then there's the track Thirsty Ego Raps, a song that is simultaneously charmingly braggadocious, a little self-deprecating, and really frank about one's ego. And one of my favorite lines on this entire record comes out of this track, with Mike saying that he is the president of rappers who don't condone date rape. <laughs> The speak and spell line that closes this track out is really nice, and I love the pitch string samples that play throughout this track. They're really funky, the melody is fun, it's sticky. Overall, the instrumentals on this record are a little clunky, they're a little lo-fi, they're a little tattered and torn and thrown together, but they do fit that really playful, laid-back, and quirky, colorful style that Mike brings to the table with his flow and with his lyrics as well. It's a match made in heaven, really. On the song Golden Age Raps, Mike comes through with a flow that is familiar because he's used it before. A rapper that he has a lot of influence on, Milo, has used it before. And with this track, he essentially pokes fun at the current state of... I guess creating art, creating media in the internet age. Mike talks about this a little bit more, but in another way, on the track John Lovitz, where he's talking specifically about touring a little bit and getting booked to play heaven, to play <laughs> the moon. And it seems like everything that could possibly be great about the booking of this show, the pre-sale, the accommodations, the fact that there's a 10-piece band at this venue that knows all of Mike's songs, it all feels perfect, but yet uh, th there's sort of a sense, at least for me anyway, where it's like, uh, it seems like they're just blowing hot air up my ass. Mike also goes into more, I guess, sort of struggles of artists and creative types trying to make a living on the song Very Much Money, where Mike is talking about all these people who he seems to really look up to and admire and see as superheroes, see as people who can fly and speak Portuguese and make beats and <laughs> deal drugs. He holds these people in high regard, but none of them make very much money. And this song and a few others reveal the only major Achilles heel on this entire record, and that is Mike's singing. It is pretty flat or sharp, depending on which song you're listening to. He's really raw and upfront about it, and though in other contexts it might not work out for other artists, at least here I think it plays into the recurring theme that Mike is just a regular human being with flaws. Though he does seem so insistent on singing on his records, I don't see why there couldn't be at least some kind of 
technical improvement into the future. As far as the straightforward rap tracks go on this thing, they're great. Drug Stamper, I love the 99 Problems referencing that if you have any more than three, it's a problem, it's an issue. The Manzir line is hilarious, of course, like I said. The Hannibal Burris verse is fantastic. Mike actually pulls out a bit of a uh, MF Doom flow, I would say, on this track. The song A History of Modern Dance, one of the best beats on this record, the best beat on this record, I think, and one of the best hip hop beats of the year with a really murky, heavy, low end bass line coming out of this thing and some really eerie high pitched drones that are just sort of ear piercing. This track really sets a tone and I like what Mike is doing with this track thematically with his lyrics talking about chance meetings and strangers coming together and talking about dance as maybe sort of a metaphor for attraction. But also there are lines thrown into this thing like environmentalist dance, sign a petition. And then there's the song Informations with Cool AD whose verse Technically isn't really fantastic. It sort of comes off as silly and comedic sort of like Hannibal Burris's verse But it works for the track and as far as the instrumental goes I think this is the closest the entire record comes to a legit banger and then the album finishes off with a really melodic Moody closer with the lyrics and just this really beautiful female vocal sample and the instrumental It's a nice finisher for this record. I think Mike came together with his most solid album to date with dark comedy. I think he's really come into his own with his delivery, with the topics that he continues to tackle in his songs, with the instrumentals that he chooses on his projects. There were a few songs on here that I was underwhelmed by, but that's really my only major issue with this LP. I'm feeling a decent to strong eight on this thing. Tran, Sishin, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Open Mike Eagle, dark comedy forever.